Welcome back to Tippy Ashwood. We're going to get out of the film studio. I've realised that I've got a lot of new subscribers and to tell you the truth I haven't really done a lot of model making that you can see in the last little while. So I'm going to take you around the origins of Tippy Ashwood through a series of stills and some bits of movies that I took as I've gone along in the building process. Some of things that you might have seen on other videos but there's quite a lot that you haven't. So stay tuned. And don't forget, subscribe to Tippy Ashwood if you want to see more. It really all starts here, my friend's Crow's Nest Tramway. Beautiful little exhibition layout with lots of history. And I realised I don't really have an exhibition layout. I haven't for many years. The basement one is a little bit too large. And I was looking at the narrow gauge, something I've never done before. And I thought, a little narrow gauge small layout might be ideal for some of my small local exhibitions. So on my search around for narrow gauge engines, I thought I'd go a little larger scale than I've worked in before. I found Small Brook Studios. They make a lovely little set of resin cast narrow gauge locomotives. But I did like that Emmett style train they had in the background. So I thought Maybe I should buy one of those at the same time. Well, of course, there's no point in having a loco if there's nothing to pull. So that was very quickly followed up with some rolling stock. Mainly the chassis and my own interpretation of bodies. And then, of course, you need some guys and some mates to help you build the thing. So here we are. Myself, on the right, Bob Downs, Admiral Dickie Bird, and Bernie Woods. So the initial idea was a four foot board, maybe two foot wide, just to run backwards and forwards on, which is a nice idea. But I soon found that I was uh, stretching my legs a little bit on my larger layout. So I added a couple of roundy round loops at each end, which were never really going to be show boards. Things were progressing nicely with the exhibition board for the centre section, but I still found myself spending more time running on the big layout. Yeah, things are pretty sedate on a small board. So there was no doubt about it. I had to build those roundy round loops. And suddenly a little two foot by four foot exhibition board turned into a lot bigger project. You need a lot of room to run G-Scale. This GN15 stuff is big, even for a small little layout. So with the end loops, you gotta work out a radius. And I went with a three foot, three foot board. The original idea just to be able to fold up when I didn't really need it. Sometimes you even run outside. But you got to check that radius carefully. Not everything's always happy on this. 
Watch the little clip. Right to the end. So with a few problems solved and better track lane, you start thinking, well, you could add some scenery to that board. And the next thing you know, you've got Hapenny Halt on Farthing Falls. This is a three foot by three foot board, which is the end of Tippy Ashwood, but sits completely independent if I want to, separate from the main platform board. So while it was quite easy to disguise the joint between Tippy Ashwood and Hipney Holt on what I call the west side of Tippy Ashwood, with this three foot by three foot box hiding all the loops underneath and even a small showcase for some of my work, it wasn't quite as easy on the east end, let's say, of Tippy Ashwood, where it's far more open. I obviously want to disguise the fact that it's a roundy roundy loop. So I've got a couple of ideas for some bridges and the trains go behind the warehouses. Yep, I went with warehouses. Big stone buildings, a lot more industrial. After all, it's the East End. And the other thing I have to disguise is, there's actually an exit road that runs behind the two foot by four foot center Tippy Ashwood board, which is a fiddle yard of sorts. Not easy to do, but we're getting there. So for old and new subscribers, that's the five boards that make up Tippy Ashwood and Hapenny Holt. I hope to be able to take it to some exhibitions, but we're not sure about that yet. Let's see what happens in the future. This has been a great fun project and really pushed some of my model making skills. And I hope you're enjoying these videos and my little learning curve towards working at this slightly peculiar scale. Well, if you're like me and you like the journey of T.P. Ashwood, get your luggage packed. I've been looking around the videos as I've been putting this together and there's a lot more work to go. And a lot more interesting details. I hope you're enjoying so please subscribe to Tippy Ashwood. You guys take care and thank you very much for watching.